Now, I know I said on Boxing Day that we would be looking at someone today who is giving us an Astronomy 101 lesson, but since then I have found something which requires my immediate attention. A video from someone who claims to have debunked the entirety of evolution in just six minutes. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome along to another episode of Tim Ford Tuesday with me, Simon Dan and Zeus. Thank you very much for joining me. Now, people that try to debunk evolution usually just don't understand evolution fully. Well, a YouTuber called just Kyle thinks that he has debunked evolution in just six minutes. Now, does he fully understand it? Let's find out. Evolution is stupid and I'm tired of acting like it's not. It's not scientific, and the only reason anyone believes something so ridiculous is because they are indoctrinated from the time they are born, in movies, in TV shows, in school, and all it takes is some basic level questions to be debunk this crazy fairy tale. I don't remember there being any movies or TV shows around in 1859 when Darwin released On the Origin of Species. Of course, since then, the reams of evidence to support his theory is unquestionable. For example, how did the first eye develop? They say, oh, this is easy, we've done this so many times. This is uh, probably what happened. Wait, what probably happened? Science about what actually happened. It's about what is empirically verifiable, what is observable, what is repeatable. Yet, you have to assume evolution to come up with this explanation about how the eye could have developed. Well, actually, the fossil record shows us quite clearly that the first eyes appeared around 540 million years ago with the trilobites. There's real, actual evidence. And then a few million years later, eyes were everywhere spurred on by the instinct to survive that clear advantage of vision that the trilobite predators had. Now, Darwin himself, of course, realised how absurd it seemed for eyes to evolve, but you can quite clearly see how with small, gradual steps. Light-sensitive cells, then light-sensitive cells all clustered together, then having that collection of light-sensitive cells to form in a little depression, etc, etc, etc. Probable explanations is not science. We are talking about what actually happened, what we can go and repeat and do, and what we have seen. Yet you come up with these crazy fantasies about how an eye could have developed, but you have to assume evolution to believe in that. The science man did not see the eye develop and say, oh, this is the science. This is what happened. We, this is empirically verifiable. They assume evolution is true, therefore, oh, it can give an explanation for everything. It's a evolution of the gaps. If there's any gap in the world, people, oh, well, random chance, natural selection, it can explain it. It's like a god, it's like god of the gaps, except it's, it, which is a terrible argument. It is a terrible argument, but it's not what evolutionists do. If there is a gap in our understanding, then it remains a gap until suitable proof has been found. Yes, theories do fill those gaps until better theories come along, but we won't claim anything's definitive until the proper evidence has been discovered. Yet they are committed to this, and you can see because they will make everything fit their grand narrative. Even if you grant them that somehow an eye could develop, how do you get two eyes that are nearly identical? I mean, the mathematical improbability of this, but then to get it twice? This is so ridiculous. Well, there was only one eye to begin with, but then the vertebrates came along and seemed to have success with the bifurcation of the nervous system. Now, this meant that the two sides of the body could be controlled independently. After that, it was only a matter of time before two eyes were better than one. It helps with width of view and depth perception, two massive advantages if you're hunting prey or trying to avoid capture. The easiest way to demonstrate this is to bring up the complexity of DNA. And because they assume evolution is true, they will come up with literal fairy tales like primordial soup as the origins of DNA. Or some of them will even believe in aliens. Yes, it is true that we are not 100% sure where or how DNA came to be. But there is no doubt that it had to have happened once proteins existed. There are a few theories, of course, but as I said earlier, none will be confirmed until the proper evidence has been found. So they will literally believe anything except the historical narrative, the biblical narrative. Oh, here we go. Why would we believe something that there is no empirical evidence for? Something which you've been harping on about for the entirety of the beginning of this video. 
Really? Because obviously a primordial soup to explain something as complex as DNA just makes so much sense. Again, we've never seen this, just like we haven't seen monkey into man. We haven't seen the eye develop. We haven't seen DNA come to, to be in a primordial soup. They are committed to evolution. They, they can't answer any of that. They can't answer junk DNA. And the more and more questions you ask them, you're going to realize how committed they are to evolution of the gaps. What do you mean we can't answer junk DNA? Junk DNA or non-coding DNA isn't really an issue. We've recently discovered that this junk DNA actually does do something. In fact, over 30 scientific papers now show that it's vital for gene controlling activities. But before we knew that, it was a major problem for the creationists. I mean, why would you create something with junk DNA? You're gonna realize they really don't know anything. Yet they are committed and they get mad at me when I don't take it as a gospel of truth that I'm a monkey man. Look, I'm not gonna get mad at you, but I'm afraid to say that you are a monkey man, whether you like it or not. Well, an ape man. I mean, this, this just proves nothing, does it? And they are perfectly fine with indoctrinating young impressionable kids in the entire world to believe their made up mythology. And if you disagree with them, you're a heretic against scientism. And they will discredit anyone as pseudoscience if you don't agree with their made up mythology. They have their dogmas and Darwinism is their grandest of grand dogmas. They have their own creed. Scientism is a cult. So if someone says to you, you, you don't believe in evolution? You don't believe that you're a monkey? Say, yeah, I don't believe in made up Hindu fairy tales. I mean, that's a bit rich, isn't it? You don't believe in made up fairy tales, but the first woman was definitely created by the first man's rib. Oh yeah, 100%. What's, what's that? What, what's the evidence? Oh, uh, it was written down in this book that I've been reading. Yes, yes, it's a book, just like On the Origin of Species is. What's your point? Oh, well, the stuff in that book, On the Origin of Species, is nonsense. But my book's correct, though. You should grow up. I mean, I used to believe in Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy, but then you get rid of these superstitious beliefs, like primordial soup and my aliens and evolution and monkey man. It's the same thing. And if someone says to you, but you don't believe like carbon dating and like the light and physics says the world's like 10 million, I mean, 1 billion, I mean, 4 billion years old. You don't believe that? Say, well, all these methods, all these things that we used to date the earth have only been studied really for like the last hundred years. So to take a hundred or even like a thousand years of data and trends and to assume that these principles have functioned in the exact same way for millions and billions of years is incredibly irresponsible. It's unscientific. Well, actually, it's not. Carbon dating, whilst it can't date in the millions of years era, it is still very useful. And of course, the 50,000 years that it can date up to is still vastly longer than the age of the Earth, according to young Earth creationists. Uranium lead dating, though, for example, can go all the way back to day dot. And the radioactive decay of atoms is something that you simply cannot argue with, I'm afraid. You are extrapolating the data uh, like, a, like way further than what is justified. To take a hundred years of information and say that these principles have been, remained exactly constant for millions and billions of years is completely crazy. It is not scientific and no one should believe in ancient earth or that we evolved from monkeys. It's completely crazy. The longer this video has gone on, the more fantastical your reasoning has become. And you appear to be getting more triggered as well. I put it to you that you get angry with people for accepting that evolution is a thing and that the Earth is over 4 billion years old. And actually, you debunk yourself in your own video. That lovely little bonsai tree there, just over your right shoulder, for example. No doubt a Chinese elm. Now, the elm tree is part of a family of trees that evolved around 110 million years ago, proven by molecular dating and diversification analysis. You really don't have a leg to stand on. Please share this video with anyone who's still stuck in that Darwinist scientism cult and they're giving into these superstitious belief. You know, they're a Darwinist believers. They have fit their Darwinist faith. We have our Christian science. We use reason and logic. They are completely operating on just crazy made up fairy tales. Reason and logic. I can give you a list of things as long as my arm that are not logical in the Bible. Come an evangelist for young earth creationism. This ancient earth evolutionary 
fairy tale needs to be debunked and people wake up to this if the government and all this you know the big powerful people in the world can lie about this then what else are they lying about well yes that's a topic for another video but i don't seem to recall the governments of the world being too bothered about evolution i could be wrong though well that's it another tinfold tuesday all done and dusted for another week Thank you so much for watching. It truly is appreciated. If you enjoyed it today, please do consider hitting that subscribe button and hitting the like button too. If you want to see more of this Kyle and his evolution debunking, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to do that too. Thanks so much for watching. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great week and I'll see you all on Friday for a Flat Earth Challenge. See you then.